Oh, you want to be a crash dummy, huh? You want to be one of them people that everybody, you know, looks at like a fall man? One of them people that want to put on a front and act like you're the hardest and biggest, baddest person and down the rock? Take the fall for someone else or someone else's shit. I'm going to tell you how people like me look at people who are crash dummies. And I'm going to tell you how being a crash dummy can make your time a lot harder. Check it out. Ha ha, Dom the best. Finna be this way till I EOS. Take it how you want, nigga. Yeah, I'm a pro. Fuck around, I bust your lot while you're at Vizzo. I hate to be this way, but I live for the moment. Waking up every day, show me an opponent. Shanks on deck, hitting bitches with locks. So much pool, I can even start you from the box. You don't wanna pay rent? Got me bent. Got lacks on deck, your money was well spent. Vultures on the prowl, so don't try test and step two. Cause violent first steps, finessing. You a hold down man? Suitcase this. My cell phone, I'm a charger, don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing? You gon' get it. Next time I see you ass, you gon' leave airlifted. What's up, y'all? You already know, man. k for all TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead, do me that solid favor. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And also make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Today I wasn't gonna do a video, man, because we got a bad storm coming. You know what I'm saying? So if y'all hear the rain, the thunder and lightning in the background, y'all forgive me. You know, I can't control Mother Nature. But either way, you know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and get into this topic that we're gonna be dropping today. Today I'm gonna be talking about being a crash dummy. Okay? Throughout the time that I've been here on YouTube, y'all have heard me speak on Crash Dummy a couple times. Y'all should already know what it is. But for the new people, I'm going to let y'all know what it is. A Crash Dummy is somebody that gets in the shit, takes the fall for another person. Somebody who just wrecks out, who wants to be, you know, accepted, who does anything they can to try to fit in. All right? Now... You know y'all hear the saying, oh, when you go to prison, the easiest way to make no one mess with you is to knock the biggest person in the room out. As soon as someone comes up to you and, and tries you, you just knock them out just to show people not to mess with you. Or as soon as you get there, the first person you see, the biggest one in the dorm, you just hit him right between his eyes and show everybody that, you know, shit, I'm nothing to play with. Ain't nothing play play about me. That right there is totally different than being a crash dummy. Okay? And... When you're considered a crash dummy, people look at you like a joke. They don't look at you like you're on that. They don't look at you like, oh, yeah, he's a savage. He's a gangster. No, they don't. They look at you like a bozo. They look at you like a clown. Like you got a big-ass red cushion nose like this. That's how they look at you. You feel me? And a lot of people make it through their bid, though, by being a crash dummy. But if you look at it, you're taking the fall for someone else. Okay, I've seen several crash dummies throughout my bid and a lot of them, you know, they just, they, they don't learn nothing from prison, you know, but they feel like they was on that in prison. In all reality, no, you was a crash dummy. Them same people that would have hurt you didn't hurt you because you took the fall by saying you're the one that did what they did and went to confinement for them all the time. You see what I'm saying? It's a difference. Like, if I'm walking around the compound and I don't like this fucking dude right here that's running his mouth about me, of course I'm not going to go up to him and swing on him in front of the officers. I'm not going to try to, or, or swing on a guard. You know, crash dummies do shit like that. You can literally tell them what to do and how to do it and they'll do it. You could tell them, go take off on that individual right there in front of that guard. Or shit, you know what? Take off on that guard right there in front of the other officers. And some of these crash dummies will do it. In all reality, they're not living like that. It's just that you're basically doing stupid shit and getting in trouble with it just to look cool in front of the same people who don't like you. Because if they really liked you and they really respected you, they want to be setting you up for failure to do crash dummy shit. You understand? Think about it. If you have homeboys and you have friends and they're telling you to do this, 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 and you know that shit ain't good, you know you're going to get in trouble, you know there's a consequence behind this action, they ain't really for you. They don't care nothing about you. You're just a stepping stone. You're just a stepping stone for them to be able to do whatever they need to do. You understand? They may need to transport some dope from this side of the compound to that side of the compound. And they know they can't do it because in the middle of the damn destinations, there's a dead zone where the guards are going to be at. So instead, they tell you to go over there and start a fight in front of the officers. Or tell you to go over there and swing on one of the officers or something. Just so that commotion happens. And you was used as a diversion. So that way they can, you know... Touch down with the pack on the other side of the compound and make money. So you literally was just a stepping stone. You was a pawn in the game. You feel me? And I know a lot of people feel good and call themselves a crash dummy. But in all reality, ain't nothing cool about that. Because you look like a clown. 
You know, and then when it comes to gangs, gangs look at that person like they're another organization's clown. You understand? If you're part of the Bloods, and then there's another gang going through it with them, the GDs, and then the Bloods got this one person that's going to crash all the time and do stupid shit and go to confinement for someone else's actions, the GDs are going to look at them like, they're not going to be like, oh, he's on that. They're not going to be like, oh, yeah, that's, th that's such and such. He's a savage. No, they're going to be like, oh, that's such and such, the Bloods crash dummy. You understand? That's how they look at it. And when you're a crash dummy, you don't get no cool points. There's a difference from putting on and standing up for yourself and, and whooping people to let them know not to fuck with you than there is being a crash dummy. Okay? I've literally seen people throughout my bid, a fight will break out in the dorm and someone will stand up because of the two people that got in a fight. Someone will stand up when the officer comes in and say, Sarge, I'm the one that did it and go to confinement for it. Just so the other person don't get in trouble. Yeah, that could be your friend, that could be your homeboy, but if you think about it, how many times did they do it in return? Here, you go to the box, back to back, back to back, back to back, you know, for shit you didn't even do. It ain't like you're going to the box for the five fights or for the three cell phones that you were transporting across the pound. So them eight times you went to the box, it ain't like you was truly living like that. Like, you're living like off of the rumors of if that was truly your situation of why you was in the box. You see what I'm saying? If you literally went to the box for fighting them five times, or you literally went to the box because you got caught with your own shit them three times, or you was transporting the shit that you wanted to transport, then, you know, that's different because now you're known for being in confinement for the shit that you did, for the shit that your name actually, you know, stands with. But when you did it for someone else, or you're in confinement doing time because of what someone else did, and you just stood up and said, hey, I'm the one that did it, da 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 just so someone else wanted to go to confinement. To me, that's a bitch move. To me, I feel like you're the same thing as a hold-down man. If you think about it, instead of someone forcing you to hold something or finessing you in to hold it, because not always, you know, the violent way and always the way to, you know, talk someone into holding your contraband, but finessing them into holding it, you know, it's the same when it comes to a DR, which is a disciplinary report. Someone done finessed you, played cool, or made you feel like it's okay to take the time for them. Or they made you do it, or you did it because you didn't want them to take it out on you because you didn't stick up for them and take the fall. You get what I'm saying? That's how it goes when it comes to hold down men. And I'm going to be real. I've seen people who were, you know, being you know, a, a crash dummy that fall in the same exact category as a hold down man. You get what I'm saying? And you'll be at one camp and yeah, you feel like a lot of people will leave you alone or whatnot because you've been putting in work. But all the work you've been putting in is someone else's work. You get what I'm saying? You've just been going to confinement for their problems, for their shit, for whatever they told you to do. I've seen people crash people, which means take off on someone and start whooping them right at center gate in front of the officers. That right there is a 100% crash dummy move. You see what I'm saying? And you know you could have got away with it. You know you could have did it a better way if you would have did it your way. But no, you did it the way that they told you to do. Why? Because you wanted to be accepted. You see? So if you think about it, if you got to do this the way they want you to do it just to be accepted, then in all reality, you're not even under the radar or you're not even respected enough to where you could do it yourself. Your two cents and the way that you would want to handle something isn't even, you know, seen to these individuals or who are having you do it the way they want you to. Like, yeah, you could catch bruh. When he goes through the center gate, don't touch him. Let him make it through the center gate where the police ain't at. And then when he's walking down the walk, run up and, you know what I'm saying, or whoop him, hit him with a lot, whatever it is. You got a better chance of getting away with it, right? But no, that ain't how they want you to be used as being a crash dummy. Instead, they want you to actually crash. They want you to actually do it in front of the police. They want you to actually get caught, go to confinement, lay down, do box time, all for them. 
That's what's considered being a crash dummy. When you have to do shit like that for people, you're a 100% crash dummy. And that don't mean you're cool or you're respected and they don't look at you like a friend. Because like I said, they want to be baiting you up and having you do these stupid ass things. You see, I've had homeboys when I was in prison, I was going to do some shit because I was fire hot. I was like, man, you know what, bro? I'm finna knock his ass out. As soon as he walks out of chow hall, I'm finna just drop him. And my dogs would be like, nah, fraud, don't do it, bro. You feel me? We don't need you to go to confinement behind this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Another thing, too. I didn't had people that were in competition with me throughout my whole bid as far as trying to be accepted by somebody. As far as trying to be accepted with individuals that we were both hanging out with. You understand? And then when things like this happen, you know, all you could do is be yourself and be real. You feel me? And... The difference is between me and them other people that were crash dummies is they had to be a crash dummy in order to get accepted. You understand? I got everything and more when it comes to respect. You feel me? I got even more than what they had. You feel me? Just by me being real and not being the crash dummy. You see what I'm saying? So it's like when this dude right here is getting respected, you know, you feel like, okay, I'm going to make them respect me and I'm going to do some crash dummy shit. And I'm going to go to the confinement over and over again and I'm going to be considered as a crash dummy. That's how people are going to respect me. And no, that isn't true. The way you're respected is when you stay humble, you stay yourself. And when, when shit comes your way or if things get in your path or in your fucking lane, you knock them out and get them up out of your zone. That's when you're respected because you're keeping it real. You're not changing up. You're not pretending to be somebody you ain't. You're not riding a wave of something you're not. You know, that's when you gain the respect. Being a crash dummy, you don't gain the respect. Now, don't get me wrong. When I was younger, I feel like a lot of shit I did growing up, was crash dummy shit, you understand? Like, in school, you know, I get in an argument with someone in, in the fucking cafeteria, I'm taking off on them. We bumping right in the cafeteria in front of everybody in the school, in front of all the teachers. It don't matter what it is, you know? And I used to get in so much trouble in school at a young age because a lot of the things I was doing was crash dummy shit. You know, but they don't call it crash dummy on the streets. In prison, it's considered a crash dummy. You feel me? But I wasn't getting put in the principal's office and saying I did some shit that I didn't do trying to stick up for somebody else. You know, I just kept my mouth closed. If it didn't have nothing to do with me, I kept my mouth closed. You know what I'm saying? Or if me and my homeboy got in a situation and I knew he was in already in a deeper situation than I was in. That's like if you get pulled over one time and they find a little bit of marijuana in your car, but your homeboy, and you know it's, he's on probation. He ain't gonna have no bond. You feel me? Now, you can either keep your mouth closed and they're gonna take your homeboy to jail with a violation of probation. He don't have no bond. Now you can't bond him out. Or you just take the little marijuana charge and you can bond out and you can beat it. You see, so it all depends on you, really. It all depends on how you would want to do it. I know a lot of people are like, man, I ain't taking the charge for nobody. Well, if you ain't taking the charge for nobody, then don't be around that type of shit. You understand? Don't get yourself involved. Don't be one foot in, one foot out. Don't be halfway in the water. You feel me? Jump in that water with no floaties on or either you wear floaties. That's simple. Don't be acting like you about that gangster shit. And then when something comes down to where you got to do some gangster acts, you know, you, you freeze, you fold. Because then that makes you look flaw as fuck. That makes you look fake. You understand? And back in the day when I would get in the shit in school and even in the juvenile program and stuff like that, I thought everything I was doing was me, you know, just trying to be me and, 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 and keep it real, you know, but in all reality, there were smarter ways to do it. And I would have found myself in less problems and less trouble if I just did it the right way rather than the crash dummy way. So then when I got to prison, I seen all these people wanting to prove their self, you know, I'm like, man, that shit ain't where it's at. That shit looks like, it looks lame to me, like literally. Every time I look at them, I swear they look like a clown from a movie. Y'all look like Ronald McDonald to me. You know what I'm saying? From McDonald's. You see, because you, you, you understand the difference when it's a crash dummy or if it's someone that's on that that they respect. Because you ain't gonna have to do as much things if they truly respect you, you know what I'm saying? They know you're living like that, they know you'll take it to that level, they know they've seen you in action before, they know if it comes down, you would do that, but they care for you, they're your dogs, they're your friends, so they don't want you to crash and wreck out. They know that y'all can do better with y'all on the compound, you know what I'm saying? Y'all have more fun, y'all will have, you know, uh, easier bid when y'all are on the compound, rather than being used as someone to go to the box for them all the time. You understand? Like, that shit is so dumb to me. Like, 
who the fuck would want to do that? Literally, why would I want to go to the box and lay down for you? Think about it. it. Makes no sense. Throughout my whole bid, there isn't one time I took the rap for somebody and went to confinement. Not one time did I take the rap for somebody and go to confinement. Only time I went to confinement for something that, that had nothing to do with me is they charged me with a cell phone and a knife. You feel me? That they found in an open bay bathroom. They charged me with the phone and the knife, and the knife wasn't mine. I kept my mouth shut. That's it. But I never, hey, that's my knife. You know, there's some people that that's what they do. They, they feel like that's how they gained respect. In all reality, you was just being used. You feel me? And I'm making this video for people who don't know. If you, if you end up finding yourself in prison and there's people that want you to constantly do shit like that and they claim they're your friends, they play like they're cool with you, you better hit that switch and remember what K-Frog's telling you that, man. They're just trying to use you as a crash dummy. You see what I'm saying? Because you think about it. If you got to do this and then go to the box... You know, yeah, maybe one time, you know, maybe two times tops, you know, okay, you know, maybe, yeah, that's still really my dog. They're not just trying to use me, you know, as a fall, man. But if it's back to back, back to back to where you spend damn near more time in confinement for that inmate that you were sticking up for than you did on the compound with that inmate, then boy, yeah, it's a certified crash dummy. That shit ain't respected. You know, it doesn't matter if you hit 10 people with a knife. Smacked five people with a lawnmower blade or none of that. You feel me? You did it for someone else and went to confinement every single time for it. Yeah, it shows you're doing some ratchet acts. But at the same time, you're a crash dummy, though. Think about it. You don't know how to make no money. You don't know how to fall back and grind and power up. You know, you don't know how to take control of the compound. You don't know how to get position. You don't know how to do none of that. Instead, you just... Go lay down for someone else. But then you claim, that's my dog to the death. Boy, ride or die. It's me and him. How does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? It don't look like, you know, one back scratches the other. I guess that's the saying. It don't look like they fall for you like you fall for them. Nah, it's more like you fall for them 15, 20 times and go to confinement back to back, back to back by admitting, oh, I did that, such and such, and didn't have nothing to do with you. Literally just told the officers, hey, I'm the one that did this and did that, just so the other person will go to confinement. But you did that 10, 15, 20 times, and then what? Maybe y'all went to confinement together once or twice from getting in an incident together? Or did you... Decide to be a, a, a crash dummy like that because that same individual had your back if you got in any other situation with anybody else. You see? So that's kind of like a protection thing. Like you're a crash dummy, you take the fall, and instead of you paying, you know, financially, instead of you paying with canteen, commissary, or money, MoneyGram, or PayPal's, or Cash Apps, or Green Dots, instead of you paying physically with cash, you're paying by being a fall man for that person. See? That's what a crash dummy can look like. It can look like you're paying for protection with your timing. You know, you going to the box for that individual, it makes it look like you're paying for their protection. Because you're. it don't make it look like, oh, that's your dog, that's why you keep doing that. Because if that was the case, it would have been vice versa. It would have been going both ways. The same thing that's going on with you going to the confinement about that person, that person would be going to confinement about you all the time as well, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Think about it. That's why you're basically paying for protection by being a crash dummy. You know, and all the other gangs, instead of them eating you and wanting your head or people that ain't in the gang wanting your head or anything like that, they're not really coming at you or really trying to eat you or trying to get you off the compound because you're considered as whoever the other person or other gang is or anything's crash dummy. You see, so it's like they know not to do nothing to you because you're that person or that gang's crash dummy. You see, that's how you're able to walk around and do what you do. You feel me? And me, I would never want to be considered as a crash dummy. Literally. Because there's a difference. You know, it's got a different it's got a different breakdown than when you look at someone who's on that or someone who's with the shit than it does being a crash dummy. You feel me? Like you think about it. You got five years. You're walking around prison. You meet some people who you swear are your friends. Next thing you know, you go to confinement seven times. 
seven times within the year and a half you hung out with these people. Each one you did 60 days for. You do the math of how many fucking days in the box you just did for somebody. You think that's your true friend? Them 60 days, yeah, you were you you were in confinement and they was on the pound and yeah, they sent you canteen, so that means that they're your dog. No, they're giving you your payment for taking the fall. That don't mean they're your dog. Me, I got put in confinement for myself, for shit about me, my own thing, and had people sending me canteen while I was back there. The same people who had crash dummies were sending me canteen. I'm back there by myself. So it's like here, you try to be somebody... You're not in order to fit in, so you land in the being a crash dummy. You find yourself in confinement because you took the fall by saying you did something for someone else. You feel me? I'm back there for phones or whatever it is, and I'm getting a bigger duffel from the same people who are sending you money back there. Who do you think they respect more? Do you think they respect the crash dummy more, or do you think they respect Frog more? Frog. You think about it. Here, you took the fall for that person. You know, you're back there in confinement, rotten, doing DR time for that individual. They may send you 15 bucks every two weeks. But then you got Frog. I went back there on my own for shit that I've done, and they sending me 50 every two weeks. Just because they my homeboys. Loafs of bread getting sent in through the flat every time they come to do meals. Every time they come to pass chow out, they open that flat. I got people that work in the kitchen that are putting loafs of bread on the food cart. They throwing them bitches inside the flat. Every time they open my flat to give me my tray, a fucking loaf of bread will fall in there. You feel me? Because they know you're going to be starving back there. You feel me? And bread, boy, you know that shit. You know, sometimes you get cups of peanut butter sent with it. You feel me? But it's like... Crash dummy isn't the way to go. The whole meaning of this video is don't be a crash dummy. If you want to take off on someone or if you got problems with someone or if you get yourself in a situation, you do what you got to do. I know at the same time, it's hard to put your pride to the side and do it the right way a lot of times. Usually if something goes down or, or, or something gets said or altercation starts, you know, the, the fade and everything takes flight right then and there. That ain't being a crash dummy. That's you sticking up for yourself and handling up right then and there, you know, but when you're doing stupid shit and taking the rap for someone else, or you're, you're intentionally want to swing on this person in front of the guards, or you intentionally want to do some stupid shit that someone's asking you to do for them, you're considered a crash dummy. To me, a crash dummy is a no good. It is a no go. It is not good to be someone that is looked at like that. You get what I'm saying? And the reason for that is you look like a clown. You're not respected. You know, you, you, you're respected in the crash dummy dictionary, I guess, but you're not respected in the inmate or convict dictionary you understand and that literally i'm just being real and there's been plenty of times you know i had people you know try to bait me up and say things and, and this and that and then as soon as they say something that i know is sour and sideways first thing that comes to my head what i look like a crash dummy what i look like bozo the clown i look like i got a big red fucking nose on me you know that's what comes to my mind you know so i would never let someone trick me you know into the box you think about it you have people on the streets that truly ain't living like that. That truly don't get their hands dirty theyself. You know, that want to tell other people to do shit that they want to do. Or maybe they'll do it themselves, but then they got other people who want to be up there in the same position and as cool and as respected as them. So then they want to do what they do and they want to take the rat to look cool. You feel me? Well, in all reality, that person tricked you off the streets. So, when you find yourself in prison, you're going to have hundreds of people that are trying to trick you off the compound and get your ass put in the box. All their ideas are not bright ideas. They're going to be telling you things and trying to amp you up to do shit that's going to lead you into the box. And I'm telling you, if you don't do it your way, you're going to find yourself in confinement way more than you would, you know what I'm saying, if you were to do it your way. Listening to what these other people tell you to do and how they tell you, oh, this is what you should do or, or nah, bro, this is what I need you to do, blah, blah, blah. And you're doing that stupid shit, you're going to the box, bro. You're going to be sitting in there shriveling up no matter how much food you get, no matter how much none of that is, you're asking to lose weight. Straight up. You ain't getting weefy back there. You feel me? And it's going to be because of someone else who's out there on the compound, still making money, still eating good, still getting vizzo, still talking to hoes. Still everything while you're in the box, forgot about. Yeah, we'll send them 15 bucks every two weeks. They'll send you $30 of canteen back there for taking the fall for them for being their crash dummy. You feel me? And check this out. Once it gets to, you know, enough times you don't went to the box for them, 
the first time or the second time they might send you money. But then after that, they done finessed you and, 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 and y'all done molded so close to where y'all feel like y'all are just dogs to where you should be taking the fall for them to where now the money's going to get even slower. You might not get 15 bucks every two weeks. You might be back there 30, 45 to 60 days with no food from that same individual you're back there for. And then they'll play cool with you. They might send you a kite from someone to you. You know, they might give them a kite, say, oh, give it to bro, da 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 da, -da. and this and that. Oh, I'm going to send you something, bro. I'm just trying to wait, you know, shit like that. But in all reality, what it is is y'all done already opened that door to where they got you feeling like you should take the fall, that you're back there, that they don't owe you no money now. And that's what happens. So the first couple times they're going to shoot it to you because y'all ain't opened that door yet to where it's understand where like, you know, you should be doing this. It ain't about being a crash dummy now. It's just you're my homeboy and this is what comes with it. So you can't get mad at your dog for not sending you nothing. You feel me? But your dog would have got mad if he went to confinement and you didn't take the fall for him. You see what I'm saying? So you never want to be a crash dummy. For anybody who knows what a crash dummy is, man, y'all drop that shit in the comment section. If you was ever locked up and you knew someone in there that was a certified crash dummy that thought he was the shit, that thought he was cool, thought he was respected, but in all reality, people looked at him like a dummy. People looked at him like a crash dummy. Like It ain't like they looked at him like, oh, we don't want no problems with him. They looked at it like, bro, just trying to ruin everything we got going on. If we got all these phones and all this money going around on the compound right now, why would we risk starting it with somebody that we know is going to try to ruin everything we got going on right now because everything he does is going to be in front of the police everything he does is to get caught to intentionally go to confinement just so people feel like he's living like that because he went to confinement again you see what i'm saying if y'all have ever seen anybody like that while you were locked up drop it in the comment section if y'all would want to be known like that be real drop it in the comment section but if not drop it in the comment section you feel me me personally i want to be want to be known as a crash dummy straight up even though a crash dummy is better known than a lot of other things but at the same time that shit just means you got a big ass nose on you like a clown you're considered a clown you see what i'm saying and i'm just being real with y'all you feel me people that have been locked up y'all seen crash dummies before you know they're everywhere they want to be respected so bad that they will do whatever they can. And a lot of people, man, that come home from prison that swear they were living like that in prison and swear they made it through their bid, that one, no one trying them and this and that, this and that. You feel me? They try to use, like, by them being a crash dummy is what pit made people not mess with them. Oh, me being this because I was on that, they wasn't messing with me. No, you were taking the fall for another dude and another gang at the time so the people weren't messing with you because you were basically paying for protection with your timing you get what i'm saying for people that have been locked up y'all know exactly what i'm talking about you feel me but i did want to speak on crash dummies even though i did a video on crash dummies a long time ago but this one here i wanted to speak on more of don't be a crash dummy you understand you know because i was on instagram and people were like oh bro i heard you was a crash dummy when you were locked up Never a crash dummy. Never. Never went to confinement for someone else's shit except for the one time when I kept my mouth closed about a knife that they found in the open bay dorm that fucking a hundred and something people had access to. That's it. That's it. That's, that's sticking to the code. You feel me? That ain't me standing up. Yeah, that's my knife. You see, that's a crash dummy. You feel me? But anyways, y'all, I'm going to wrap this video on up. I appreciate y'all watching. Like I always say, and I mean that shit. For all my new subscribers, welcome to K-Frog TV, man. It's been a long ride, and we're just getting started. I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like and subscribe button. Like I said, keep them rat squares, clowns, chomos, pedos, gunners, wannabe island boys, clout chasers, people that lied, people that fucking got pulled out gold, that rent rims in 2022. Keep them people out your circle, man. The shit eaters, the people that are mad because I want to give them a shout out. Them fucking junkies, the people that shoot dope up. Keep them all out your circle, man. Until next time, it's the one and only Frog.